Hi Pilgrims, it's Nadine from Nadine Walks back with another Camino video. Today we're going to be talking about tips for walking the Camino de Santiago and I'm going to be focusing on some of the lesser known, less talked about tips. These were all things that I didn't know about before I embarked on the Camino. It was all stuff that I learned either on my first Camino or even on subsequent Caminos. Some of the tips are going to be practical and some just kind of, you know, they address more the nature of the walk, your overall experience. In any case, I do hope that some of these will be helpful to you. Maybe you'll learn something new. If Whether you're a returning pilgrim or a brand new pilgrim, I hope you can get something out of this. So we're going to jump right in and start with tip number one. When you go to an ATM to withdraw money for your Camino, um, because the Camino takes a lot of cash, you are going to need cash for the Camino. If the ATM gives you an option of withdrawing smaller notes, so that would be like 10 euro notes, 20 euro notes, go with that option. Often ATMs will give you 50s, even 100s, and those are a lot harder to break when you're walking along the Camino. So for one, keep your eye out for the option to take out the 10s and 20s. Always go with that option. If you do get out 50s or even 100s, one tip is that you can go into the bank and see if they can break those larger bills down into smaller ones for you. I usually try to hit ATMs during opening hours of the bank. So an ATM that's attached to a bank and one that has opening hours. Um, just in case there's ever a problem with my card, I can go in and talk to someone, try to get it addressed. That's never happened, but just in case I try to do that. Um, but that would also be an advantage if you're left with kind of a stack of 50s and you want to try to break them down into smaller notes, you can go into the bank. I have also found that grocery stores are really good places to try to break down larger bills. Most often, even if I'm only buying a few things and it doesn't cost much, I can give them a 50 and they can pretty easily break it. Uh, along the Camino, you can, you know, in, you know, some restaurants in the albergues, you know, sometimes they can break the larger notes, but I have run into some trouble sometimes as well. I think, you know, in a lot of the bars in smaller villages and certainly at some albergues, they're going to have trouble breaking those larger notes. So when you can try to break down those larger bills into smaller ones. Okay, moving on to tip number two. So speaking of grocery stores, I think it is very handy to bring a reusable bag, like a very lightweight tote bag with you when you're shopping in grocery stores or picking up supplies. So this is a bag that I always carry on my Caminos. I think it's called a Chico bag. And I actually use this for my day bag. So once I get to an albergue and shower and go out in the afternoon and evening, I just carry my essentials in here. But it is super lightweight and it is pretty large. So it's very easy for me when I stop by a grocery store to just kind of put my things right in there. So grocery stores in Spain, I know in France, Portugal, many places in Europe, um, they don't kind of typically give out plastic bags for your things or you have to spend a little bit of money to buy the plastic bags to put your food into. Um, and so not only by carrying a reusable tote bag can you save that fee, but it's also just better for the environment and cuts down on plastic. Um, so having a tote bag is really handy. Um, I also, in the last couple of years, I carry, you know, my other one as my day bag, but I also usually throw this into my pack if I can remember. This was actually a reusable tote bag that I got on the Camino a couple of years ago. There were a few Algarves handing these, these out, trying to encourage pilgrims to cut down on waste and to use these instead of plastic bags. So that is tip number two. Okay, tip number three. It's all about the menu del dia. So many pilgrims who are walking the Camino, going to walk the Camino, they know about the menu peregrino. And that's the kind of three course menu that comes with a starter, an entree, a dessert, water, wine, bread that's served to pilgrims in the evenings for a pretty reasonable fee, maybe between eight to 12 euros. That the pilgrims menu is a really great option. I like it a lot. But another menu to look out for is called the menu del dia. It's like the menu of the day. And this is the lunchtime meal that most Spaniards eat. So this is what the locals are eating. Um, it is lunch. It's usually the biggest meal of the day in Spain served maybe between like 1.30 and 3.30, maybe even until four o'clock. So it's the midday meal. It's very similar to a pilgrim's meal, so it's typically three courses. The starter, entree, a dessert, comes with bread, comes with the choice of a drink. 
the cost is very comparable to the pilgrim's menu it might be a little bit more maybe between 8 and 14 euros but the food in the menu del dia tends to be of better and higher quality than the pilgrim's menu and there's also more variety too you know you're eating what the locals are eating so when I walked my first Camino, I, I don't think I was aware of the Menu Del Dia, um, but on other Caminos, I have tried to take advantage of the Menu Del Dia, and it's always been really fabulous. If I can, I like to walk my full stage and get to the albergue. If I have time to shower, then go back out and have a really nice long lunch. That's a great way to do it. Sometimes if I'm walking a longer stage and the timing is right and I hit a town that's got some restaurants offering a menu, um, I'll just take a really long break in the middle of my day, <laughs> have a long meal, and then keep on walking. So if you are on the Camino, keep your eye out for uh, the menu del dia and definitely try to take advantage of it. Okay, tip number four also kind of involves food, but this is actually about drinks. So there are two drinks that I wanted to recommend for pilgrims to try if it sounds like something that you would enjoy. One is a drink called Aquarius, and this is basically like a mineral sports drink. You know, it's a really hydrating, refreshing drink. It's like water, but like with a little extra flavor. It does have sugar in it, so if you're looking for a sugar-free option, this might not be the best way to go, but Aquarius Aquarius is a very, very refreshing sports drink. And I have found that it's something when I need a little boost in the day, if I'm feeling really drained, a bit dehydrated, you know, obviously drinking water is good, but drinking an Aquarius is even, it feels a lot better. It kind of gives you more electrolytes. It's a really refreshing option. Um, I don't think I knew about this on my first couple Caminos, but once I discovered it, it's a drink that I usually try to seek out. You can find it in just about every grocery store. Most bars will offer it. So that could be a good little refreshing pick me up to drink as you're walking the Camino. And then the second drink option, also very refreshing, a little bit different than a sports drink, but it's the Tito de Verano, which basically translates to a summer red. So it's a summer red wine. It is similar to sangria, but it's a lot simpler. And so basically it's made with red wine and then some kind of like lemon lime soda, sometimes lemonade. It is served cold, often over ice. It's really refreshing. So if you're walking and you are craving a refreshing drink, but you don't want something maybe as heavy as wine, or if you don't want to drink a beer, try a tinto de verano. Okay, tip number five, and that's to sometimes consider staying off stage when you're walking the Camino. So most pilgrims and myself included use a guidebook or an app. And in the guides, you know, there's a breakdown of a Camino route broken down into different stages with starting and stopping points. And many of these guides kind of follow roughly the same kind of itinerary. And this can be really great. And it's wonderful to follow a guide and to kind of use the stages in a guide. There's nothing wrong with that. Often the guide will kind of break it down into reasonable walking stages where the difficulty isn't like too intense. Usually you're stopping in some places where, you know, there's a lot to see and do some historical stuff, beautiful places. So staying and kind of going by the stages that the guidebook shares can be really good. But I think sometimes it's just fun to kind of stop a little off stage, whether it's in the middle of the stage or a few kilometers before or past where your guidebook has you end. You know, there are a lot of hidden gems that you can discover. I really like it sometimes because it's a little more quiet when you're staying off stage. You know, many pilgrims follow the guidebook stages, so you're going to find more pilgrims kind of clustered in those starting and stopping points. And if so, if you want an experience that's a little quieter, um, I find that especially when I stay off stage and start in the morning, I usually get, you know, an hour or two of very kind of quiet, solo, peaceful walking because there are just not that many pilgrims around. I've also found that it's an opportunity sometimes to meet different people. You know, if I'm getting to know people and we're kind of following the same stages, if I kind of adjust a little, that kind of puts me into another pilgrim grouping. And it's just kind of cool to be discovering like who are all the people who are kind of walking all around you and, and in the days kind of together. So that is tip number five is just sometimes consider staying off stage. All right, and now tip number six. And that is that the donativo albergues do not mean free albergues. And this is something that I didn't 
fully understand when I first walked the Camino. I didn't know much about Donativa Albergues and sort of how they worked at all. And I did stay in a couple on my first Camino and the kind of general impression from a lot of the pilgrims I was around or walking with was that, oh, it's a Donativo. It's the least expensive. You don't have to pay very much. You can even just like throw some coins in the donation box and you're good to go. Now, Donativo Albergues, it's, they kind of work within a system where they do help pilgrims who might not be able to afford to stay in albergues or private albergues or private rooms every night. So pilgrims that don't have much money, you know, they can stay at a Donativa albergue and only pay a few euros if that's what they have. And it's a really beautiful concept that can really help those pilgrims. But that doesn't mean that all pilgrims should only pay a few euros. Really, a Donativo is a donation. You're making a donation sort of based on the experience that you get from that albergue. And so a good rule of thumb, I think, is to really consider what you would be spending at another albergue for a bed, for a dinner, if a dinner is included, and they often are at Donativa albergues, sometimes breakfast is included. So you think about what you would be spending on a bed, dinner, and breakfast, at another place and you make a donation that's pretty comparable. I think also some pilgrims try to uh, pay it forward a little bit or else kind of think about sponsoring a pilgrim who maybe couldn't afford more by putting in a little extra when they make a donation. So I think if you are walking the Camino and you stay at a Donativa Albergue, and I would encourage it if you can find one, um, often these are really special, beautiful places that have a strong spirit of the Camino, uh, but I would really encourage you to think carefully about the donation you're making and don't treat it as a really inexpensive stay on your Camino. All right, now we're on to tip number seven. and. Tip number seven is something that I have done when I walked the Camino. I actually started it on my first Camino. I've continued it on every one ever since, and it's not gonna apply to everyone, but I wanted to share it because I think it's a kind of fun idea. And that is that I take a photo of myself, a selfie, every morning before I start walking. It's something that I initially decided to do because I was just kind of thinking, how am I gonna kind of keep track of all the photos that I'm keeping on my phone as I walk? Like I just take hundreds and hundreds of photos on the Camino. And I wasn't really sure if I was gonna be able to like differentiate from day to day, especially having so, so many photos. And I thought, oh, if I take a photo of myself every morning before I start walking, that'll be the indicator that, oh, it's day two, it's day three, it's day four. So it's a way for me just to kind of differentiate differentiate between stages and days on my Camino. At least that's how it started. But now after walking, you know, I've walked well over a hundred days on a different Camino routes over the years. I think it's pretty cool that I have a photo of myself early in the morning, first thing before I start walking. It's kind of been really neat to see the progression, especially on a longer walk, like when I walk for about a month. It's really kind of neat because like the first the first several days, the first week, I look a little bit different than I do later on in the walk. And it's not just physical changes because they're those two, you know, my skin gets a little more tan, my hair gets a little more light, but I, you can kind of see that I, you know, I'm not quite as nervous or uncertain. I tend to look a little more confident. There are times I look really happy. Usually by the end of the walk, those selfies, I just look so settled and kind of just really grounded in the experience. So anyway, it's something that I do and I've really loved doing on my Camino. So you might consider that too. So that is tip number seven is to take a selfie every morning before you start walking. All right, on to tip number eight. And this also has to do with walking. And the tip is kind of simple. It's every once in a while, turn around. So, you know, as we move towards Santiago, we're headed in one direction. Usually we're headed west. Maybe if you're walking in Portugal, you're heading north or the Via de la Plata, but you were all kind of moving in the same direction. And that's towards Santiago. You know, we're focused on the path ahead. We're looking for those yellow arrows and that's how you want to do your walk. Um, but I think sometimes it can be really easy to kind of lose focus of what's around us. And so I think, you know, the greater tip here is to keep your eyes open and pay attention and to absorb and notice all the details. But I like the tip of turning around every once in a while because I think it's something that it's easy for me to not do at all. And I can miss out on some really great things if I don't turn around and if I don't look all around. I think sometimes you can capture incredible sunrises if you look over your shoulder. Uh, my favorite example of this is 
um, of one of my favorite spots on the Camino Primitivo. There's this area where you're kind of walking at a bit of elevation, but sort of on this like plateaued area where you're just kind of in nothing but these open fields. And I've walked the Camino Primitivo twice and both days when I was in this section, it was kind of earlier in the morning and there was a fog coming through. It was this really kind of quiet, isolated, really kind of special experience walking up there. And you're walking through the fog and then this tree appears. And so that specific spot is one of my favorite spots on the Primitivo. And I took a picture of this tree both times that I walked and it's become one of my favorite photos that I've ever taken on the Camino, and I'll share that here in the video. Um, but the thing about this tree is I took this photo not as I was approaching the tree, but after I had passed the tree and then turned around to see what it looked like from the other side. And I thought it was even more incredible than it looked as I was approaching. And so I always think of this photo as an example of just the importance of sometimes turning around and just stopping and pausing for a moment and really looking all around you. All right, so now we're up to tip number nine. And tip number nine is a kind of don't do. And that is if you walk the Camino Finisterre, so if you get to Santiago and you decide to continue on and walk to the coast and walk to Finisterre, when you're at Finisterre, do not burn your clothes. So there's been sort of this misconception a bit that burning your clothing is a tradition to do at the end of the of the Camino and when you arrive in Finisterre. Um, and it is something that I think some pilgrims have done maybe in the last 10, 15 years. It is actually something that I heard about when I was researching the Camino before I walked my first Camino. It was kind of in my head that like, oh, that's one of the things pilgrims do when they arrive in Finisterre. I didn't burn any of my clothes, um, but I did see kind of the remnants of some fires on one of the beaches. Um, but burning your clothes is not a good idea. It is not recommended. In fact, it is a band of practice. Um, it is not good for the environment. It's a fire hazard. It's not a good idea. So if this is something that you kind of hear or just kind of you hear other pilgrims talking about, oh, this is something that pilgrims do when they get to Finisterre, um, please don't do it and try to correct them and say, actually, that is not a good practice at all. You know, there are some other kind of rituals that you can partake in when you get to Finisterre. Certainly like go to the lighthouse and sit on the rocks and watch the sunset, have a celebratory drink. You can dip yourself, douse yourself in the water when you reach the end. I think this is a kind of fun thing to do, but do not burn your clothes in Finisterre. All right, and then tip number 10, the last tip that I have, this is just to share what you have when you're walking the Camino. And I think, you know, this is maybe a bit of a more common one, but it's a nice one to really keep in mind. I think kind of that spirit of generosity and helpfulness really makes the Camino so special. It's certainly one of the things that makes the Camino so special. Um, I've really found that when other pilgrims share what they have with me, when I've shared what I have with other pilgrims, it really enhances the connections that I'm making. And it just, again, it creates such a special feeling feeling as I'm walking. And this doesn't have to be anything big. It can be blister supplies. I have certainly had a few pilgrims help me out by giving me some supplies to deal with my blisters. Um, it could be earplugs. I've given a spare set of earplugs out to another pilgrim who didn't have any. Could be certainly sharing your food, you know, a bar of chocolate, a chunk of cheese. Um, but I think this is something that can happen a lot on the Camino and really does happen a lot on the Camino and really, really adds to the overall experience. So when you have a little something extra please look for opportunities to share what you have. Okay, so those were my 10 maybe less talked about tips for walking the Camino de Santiago. Please, of course, in the comments below, you know, let me know what you think about them, if you agree, if you disagree, and also please provide some extra tips down below. I think that's really going to help other pilgrims as they plan on walking. Well, it was wonderful to be here talking to you all again, and I'll be back soon. Buen Camino!